I'll click back on the administration link. And, or I'll click on the administration link now, rather. And uh, one thing that we really enjoy about this interface is it's nice and clean. My favorite thing about this, uh, this new enhancement is that it opens up in the same page. You know I'm going to get that off to the side um, new window that, uh, that 10G had in the past. And again, security is going to be uh, set up similar to 10G um, where you're looking at managing privileges, catalog groups um, for presentation services, in presentation services. Uh, you're still able to manage the sessions, take a look at those. Um, a couple of new features here are the um, ability to manage the mapping data, and then also um, managing BI Publisher, which I'll go into in a second. But what I wanted to highlight here was that if you look for, um, you're looking for any security or iBots or anything like that, um, that's all again now in the Fusion Control, and we can we can show that a little bit later if we have any time. Um, Again, what I do want to point out, because I know we have a lot of BI Publisher users out there, there's still a lot of BI Publisher content uh, from 10G coming across. And um, if we click on Manage BI Publisher here, again, what you'll notice is that the, the schema in the interface remains consistent. And you can see that it's a complete integration now with Oracle BI Publisher. Um, and you even have the default integration set up for you. So no dealing with the XDO, the configuration files, um, all the all the um, the lagging things that were left in in 10G that you kind of had to combine yourself. You get the default integration. And I know we have a webinar coming up soon on on BI Publisher. So if you're looking for more detail on that, um, you'll definitely want to sign up for that webinar. I think that's actually next month. Okay. So now let's get into some of the the functional usage of um, or functional user interface of the tool and um, I'll just start off by going to a real quick simple demo dashboard and I hope everyone can see my screen okay um, again we are taking a, a few questions on this webinar so if you have them please go ahead and submit them um, um, through your um, your tool there and um, let me just show you this really quickly since it's, it's happening. Uh, I'm getting a view display error down at the bottom left. Um, that has to do with the charting engine. And um, what I want to show you here is just um, and page options are now up in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. You can right-click or click on that and then click on Refresh. And that's pretty much where your Refresh option now resides. Look at a Refresh for me. There we go. Taking us pretty time. Okay, excellent. So I think that's still one of the uh, tiny leftover bugs in 11G, but uh, not to worry. And uh, you know, as we go over and looking at the user interface, it's so very clean. Again, Web 2.0 functionality looks great, shows great, and uh, is a very functional tool. Um, to point out just a real quick uh, charting feature that I think a lot of people really love is now if you hover over your chart, you get a bubble or a balloon pop up, and it's really showing you um, basically each element's value in any description that you might have uh, or want to show to an end user. Then on the left hand side, um, I really like how the, the filtering and uh, even some of the navigation gets switched over onto the left side of the dashboard. And it just looks so clean, it's almost like you're in a commercial website. And uh, what we can do is use one of the new features, which is called the slide filter. And uh, I'll just do a random filtering here. Now, you do have to click apply to enact the filter that you wish uh, on the left side. And what I want you guys to pay attention to is looking at the total product row. And let's look at the value for 2008. And what this one filter is doing for us is it's basically taking the years and filtering um, within certain weeks within those years to, um, to change our data. So if you're looking at the, the element here, the cost section of 2008 and the product, once I click apply, we should see our value change. Let 
Looks like I've got a little bit of a slow response from the server, but not too bad. And then I even have the ability to come here uh, for products. This is a new new filter function. Again, really nice and clean. And I have the ability to select certain elements within um, a designated hierarchy that's created for that filter. So I could come in here and select a high level, uh, let's say BizTech, move that over. Or I could even select a lower level. Actually, I'll go down here to Fun Pod Game. I'll just take that whole level. I can move that over. Okay. And now when I click on the Apply button, now my, my product hierarchy should change to reflect just the items that I've, I've placed the filter on. And the neat thing about that is if you, if you haven't seen the, the uh, updated intuitive hierarchy, I can drill directly on my filter, and it works as if though that was the default report. Okay. Let me try to do a quick refresh on that page. And so again, really nice clean interface. Um, it's definitely, if, if you haven't implemented 11G in your organization, uh, you know, it's definitely one of those things where it, it uh, immediately has that uh, aesthetic appeal to it. And I think it really draws in, in the end users who want to, to use the tool and, and adopt the tool. I'm just going to go back in and clear those selections out really quickly. And if I want to get this back, I simply remove those items, click apply, reset my filter. And again, even with the new drill down capability, the new intuitive hierarchy, um, all these levels can be the user um, um, specific. So if you don't have access to a certain part of that hierarchy or, or a certain row level security, it's also reflected here. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to show is something called master detail. It's new to 11G. Um, you guys might have seen this in a similar web-based application where you might have a tabular grid and then on a on the side pane you might have more detail or something like that. And once you select on a certain row in that grid or that table, um, the corresponding panel will just show you the information, the detailed information about that that specific row you selected. So something very similar is capable in 11G now. And what I want to show you is if you look at this very nifty slider here down at the bottom, I'll just run that just for show and tell. And you can actually watch the chart change down here. Very minor adjustment. Um, but if we click on any of the years up here, I'll just click on 2009. What we want to watch for is for not only our chart to change, the slide to change automatically, uh, but we'll also see over here on this um, table, we'll actually see this value change for that page from. I'll just click on 2009. Currently, the slide is on 2008. Okay. So now we've got change pretty much across our dashboard just by using this master table and having the other um, views and reports act as um, the detail. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, new interaction that you can you can get across there. And uh, we can of course do all sorts of sorting now um, in an ad hoc fashion, very dynamically. If I want to do column sorting, uh, descending, ascending, we get a nice prompt here with the arrows, and I can simply just click on those, and then we'll get uh, we'll get a sort going on here by column based on the value. Okay, so it looks like I just did it there. Then, of course, you can go ahead and pivot um, in, in an ad hoc fashion. It's, it's, it's very nice. Your users don't need to actually set up individual reports. You can actually come in here and um, set up uh, or dynamically uh, do a pivot table. So I'll just drag on the product hierarchy on the handle, as it's called, and I'll drag it up above my um, my years. Let me see what that looks like. 
you know, let me do it differently. Let me, let me put my years on the rows, and we'll see what happens for that pivot. I just have a bit of a delay. There it goes. All right. Slow connection. I apologize about that. So now we can get into a pivoting mode um, and start seeing data a little differently. Our end users can have a lot more control on it without any of your report developers having to create a multitude of reports. Um, it just makes things so much easier for everyone. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to show is we looked at S-based earlier. Again, a big push for EPM integration. And uh, what we want to talk about here, if we're looking at this cost multidimensional uh, view here on the right, upper right-hand corner, what we want to look at here is just the ability to mesh together uh, S-based and relational data. So S-based being your OLAP multidimensional data and an Oracle uh, relational database uh, system um, being your relational uh, data store. And if you look up here in the columns, we see we've got revenue, we have cost, which is S-based only, so that data is specifically coming from S-based. We've got discount, which is coming from uh, a relational source. And then you see here the margin percentage. And that margin percentage is actually um, the math of um, your, an, an S-based numerator and a uh, discount denominator, if I remember the math correctly. But basically, it's a calculation between S-based data and relational data um, being meshed at the same level. And um, that's really called something called fragmentation. It's really neat. Um, and then what we also have now, I'm drilling down, and I drill down to the week level. And what we can see here is that we've got data, or S-based cost data, at the, the monthly level, basically. Let's say that's our level zero, that's the lowest level in our S-based cube. Um, and we have revenue data pretty much at the week level for our relational data. So as we drill down, we don't get any cost data um, coming from S-based, but we do get other data coming from a relational. And that's something called federation, because we're able to see the data at different levels, and uh, but still have the same perspective. So that's just something that, uh, again, it's coming through in, a, in 11G really strongly, um, really kind of umbrellaed by the fact that you can drill through uh, intuitively in your tree view like you would in S-based or just like you would do intuitively um, in any type of um, uh, rollup or, or OLAP solution. 